Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to look at how to record your screen using the OBS or Open Broadcast Studio. It's free software that's available for download, but it's a bit more complex than maybe you would think it would be the first time that you open it. That's because of all the features. Let's check it out. Here we are in OBS directly after you open it from an install. And I'm lucky enough that my audio device is mapped. If they do not, click the settings section here, go down to properties, and inside here, make sure that your microphone is selected for the mic and auxiliary input. Go back up to your desktop audio, check to make sure that you've got your default, again with the properties, your default output, the one that you want to record. And those will now be your audio input options when you get to your sources that we're now going to configure. So I'm now going to configure my sources because you need sources to then create a scene. Um, we could name a scene like full screen recording, but I don't have any sources to it, so I don't actually get anything recording. Now I'm going to start with a display capture. This is a default display capture. It's displaying my entire 1440p desktop. The challenge with that is that a lot of people watch these YouTube videos on their phones and this becomes terribly small which is why in fact you'll notice a red dashed line around this section on my desktop. This is actually PowerPoint doing some recording for me for screen capture. Not as good uh, in terms of screen capture, doesn't have as many options but when you want to make a video about OBS uh, Inception rule says don't use OBS. It's just a little more complex than I want to deal with this morning. So here we are recording in PowerPoint, but OBS is looking at the entire width of that monitor. That's something I'm going to have to change. The next thing that I do is add in my audio input capture device. There we go. And adding that in, I'm going to use an existing one, which is that mic. So now I have a mic and a display tied to my full screen recording scene. Can now move this back down so that we can get a bigger view of it. And what do I do so that I can trim this down to only show a 1080p window? Well, we need to go to settings and set up a few things first. The first thing we need to do is get into our output and understand where we're recording when we store videos on our desktop. We need to understand how we're encoding these uh, videos. We have three options here, high quality, medium file size, indistinguishable quality, large file size, and then lossless, which would be basically uncompressed raw video, if you've ever heard of raw in the video world, and uh, it's a tremendously large file size. I found the medium file size to be just fine. Do note the default here would be FLV. FLV doesn't play nicely with DaVinci Resolve, doesn't know how to read it, so I suggest flipping that to MP4. I use the hardware encoder in my graphics card. You're welcome to use that of your CPU or a low CPU usage preset so that it doesn't chew up your processing time quite as much. Remember, your computer not only now has to render and decode or uh, render to your screen all of the output that it wants to show, it now needs to also encode it and save it. So it's doing double the work here. We need to make sure we make that as easy as possible jump down to the video section and you'll notice that my base canvas resolution is 1340 by 1440 or 13 3440 by 1440 this is my challenge and is the reason that you're seeing my entire desktop right now I can change that and I should if I'm going to be recording to YouTube for anybody that might watch it on a phone I'm going to change that down to 1080 and immediately watch what happens in the background here my screen shrinks all the way down to a 1920 by 1080 resolution in my recording behind here. So now that I'm only recording a small section of my screen, I have to be aware of what that section is as I'm setting up recording parameters. Now, uh, let's get a little fancy, I guess. So I have a webcam up here, and one of the things I'd like to do is add that to, say, the bottom corner so you can see me like a traditional streamer, maybe. So I'm going back into my sources and I'm going to add a source. Pull that up so you can see it. Add a source. And out of that source, I now have a video capture device. That would be my webcam. 
I'd like to add an existing, but it doesn't seem to know that it's there. So I click OK. And whoa, hey, there I am. Now it's found my Logitech Brio. It knows that I'm here. Uh, obviously, lighting color could be fixed, but that's not where we're at right now. You can do that, however, in the Configure Video section. The resolution and et cetera, we're going to let stick to the device, uh, device default for the moment. Um, you could do a custom resolution and shrink down how much you were, you were saving. All right, so now I'm going to add this to my source, and you'll notice immediately, try this back down so you can see it, I've got my webcam sitting on top of my desktop footage. I can scale this down. I am sitting over in the corner of that. It's not scaled. And put it where I might like. The beauty now is that I've got these sources. I can create new scenes. One that maybe has, in fact, what I normally do is I have one that has my video face in it and one that doesn't so that I can choose on the fly which one I'd like to show. And you can dynamically show these and flip these while you are recording. Speaking of recording, to record, you click the Start Recording button down here on the right. And to stop, maybe surprising, but you click Stop Recording. It is helpful if you were to uh, have multiple monitors so that you can manage this over in one monitor and have your um, capture area in another. It is possible to do it on one screen, but um, a lot easier if you've got multiple monitors. The last thing I'll show you is studio mode. This allows you to monitor multiple sources. Uh, you've got a preview section that you could use, and you've got a program that is what you're displaying at the moment. This allows you to ready items here on the left so that you'll notice I'm changing it around, but it's keeping this in the middle. And then when you want to, you can transition between them, and there's different transition options, etc. cetera. Uh, pretty cool, like the studio mode if you're going to be doing some serious streaming or broadcasting. There you go. That's how you set it up. That's what you use it for. If you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comments. I always respond. And give me a like and a subscribe if you thought this was a worthwhile video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.